Tomba TV. And you got Tomba TV here. Tomba TV's in the house. All right. I, I like to collaborate with artists. So this board was made by an artist in um, in Australia. And really? I did a, I did a um, oh, look at that. I did a, um, an art show in the Hamptons in 2008. And this is one of the pieces that was there. There's not a lot of Aboriginal artists that live on the coastline yeah. that make coastal Aboriginal art. But yeah, Tony like Hart that. is a surfer from Australia and uh, you know, pure Aboriginal. So this is a story from his forefather's time. They used to send a guy out to the point where the, where the river comes out in the uh -huh. ocean and they had a, a special call and they called the porpoise and the porpoise would come and herd the mullet in and then they, and this is how they hunted the fish. So okay. this is some of the tools they have, their spears and nets and, and the, uh, you know, the, um, yeah, yeah. A boom these, are the, these are called, packs. these are the peepee, -pee. these are the shells they find yeah. on the beach, uh -huh. and then the goanna. Oh. These are all, you know, stuff that they ate, and this is a They're special vine. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a beautiful piece of work. This was beautiful. in the Architectural beautiful. Digest. I was in Playboy magazine one year for really? a buyer's guide. Yeah. Wow. It never sold. I, it's, it's for sale now for $10,000. Oh, I make, what's I that? Make, uh, I make art out of the tongue depressors. Oh, that is pretty cool. Yeah. Well, what that I'm going to do really is I'm cool. going to paint it. I'm going to paint it white, and then I'm going to start painting different colors on it. So it'll be really. I like that. This is the shaping room upstairs. This is the, the coal wood board. Oh my God! This yeah. is badass. Look uh, at that. This was ordered by a, a, a lady here that lives here in, in, on, in Kilauea. It's Kalewa. not a surfer. You're going to hang it on the wall. No, right? this is a wall hanger. This is, this is definitely know. not a surfer. So this this uh, wood, it came from a koa tree that was about oh, nearly 90 feet high. And it, and it grew in uh, Kelly Franklin and I um, and his son Gabe. Mm -hmm. Uh, we and uh, Bula, Bula T. Yeah, Bula T. Yeah, we go, we're the millers, right? We're, <laughs> we're, we stand around and I'm the boss. I tell everybody how to do everything. <laughs> we went up to Coquay and Kelly got a, a, a permit from the federal uh, forestry division to take the, this wood out of the forest. So wow. this, Gabe counted the rings on this tree. It was nearly 210 years old. Really? Oh, so each yeah, so ring is like a, a one generation. ring is one year. So one he year. counted them all out to a point where he couldn't read them anymore. But it was over two hundred. Holy um, So this 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 is this is the kind of wood that uh, the ancient Hawaiians used to make their voyaging canoes out of. Yes. Very long, straight grain. This is like right in here. This is called curly koa. Curly koa, yeah. And this is very rare to find a, mm -hmm. a wide piece like this, this is in its really own. Nice you know, so this is called you know, a, this is called an olo. Um, and this was uh, this was used by the men primarily, and probably a, a little bit bigger than overhead waves, you know. Yeah. What kind of wood is that? That's all balsa wood. Balsa wood. Wow. Yeah. So I started growing balsa wood here on Kauai in 1997. Really? And I gave um, seedlings to like Dick Brewer and Terry Chan and uh, Steve Tiao and a couple other shapers, and so they've. They've been growing their wood. Recently, we harvested um, some of the seedlings from that first planting, mm -hmm. um, which were like 20 years old, I think. They were about 25 feet high. The thing about the the early early surfboards, right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't. There's no written history of when when surfing originated, but I'm sure that the Hawaiians, you know, in their voyaging from uh, Polynesia, had somehow developed it over time because I know I've been to Tahiti. Um, I don't think that, I don't I don't think that I don't know if they had surfing in Tahiti because it doesn't lend itself to that because they have a barrier reef. Yeah, and you got there, you know, far very out few breaks grip break close to the, yeah, the, to the, the beach. To the you know, they don't really have beaches there. So I think it might have originated in Hawaii because there's such a variety of breaks that they yeah. can paddle out yeah, to and yeah. that kind of thing. Right around the end of the eighteenth century, surfing almost died out. And hula almost died out because the missionaries said, we don't no want you practicing. buggers down by the ocean because you're naked and we can't handle that. That's we got to put clothes on that's you. That's not Christianity. Yeah, but we got to put clothes on <laughs> you. <laughs> that is true. So, so what happened was these kind of boards became a forgotten art. They were never made again, ever again. They went, 
the only reason I knew, knew about these in 1967, I went to the Bishop Museum in Honolulu, mm -hmm. and I went into the back room, into the archival room, mm -hmm. and they let me measure and take notes of the board. So I still have that journal. And what kind of blew me away was, and I didn't understand at the time, because all the boards were laying down. There was a, a couple of 18-footer, the 12-footer, 10-footer, and the smaller Elias and Onini. This is, this is the interesting part about the, the Hawaiian surfing, is that we always think that the Hawaiians are going straight off and they were just riding waves straight in, but no, the ancient Hawaiians, because the rail that was made here, these rails are the thinness of a water ski right here. Oh, it's yeah. like nearly two and a half inches thick in the center, but it tapers all the way down here to the thinness of, of a, a water ski, but feel the edge here. Feel That's how hard really that is. sharp. So all these boards that I looked at, I, I went, these boards are unfinished. All these boards have this square rail. They're, they're unfinished, right? So forgot about Elias, forgot about, you know, the Hawaiian, this old Hawaiian board until 2008 when Derek Hine rode one for the first time in probably in history at uh, Jeffreys Bay. And he was going so fast, going so fast and turning and doing 360s and doing all this stuff. I went, wow. The old Hawaiians were surfing. They were unbelievable. Ripping, yeah. They were ripping. They were getting barreled. They were they were they were on fire. They were, and it was, became a forgotten art because these boards were capable of going that that the way. Fast and they didn't doing they didn't like they that, didn't yeah. slip out. They call they call that sliding ass. Sliding. You could you can make them slide ass, but you know they're heavy. Like the the royalty preferred the koa. Um, I think Ko was probably so so Ser more like a so prevalent at the time that, yeah. the, that even the the native the just the, the common people were able to use it. What a beautiful board, man! This thing is awesome. This wood, you know, I I'm I always go. I'm honoring the the the, the beauty of this old tree yes. because you know, 200 years on this planet, bro. This it's is a like long this time. something is beautiful. It's really really. This is a good. this is a little piece of uh, time and history. Right yeah. Now. Absolutely. So this is this, this is, is the shaping room. This is where we we uh, I had to you know the wood dust is so fine I got to segregate the the foam from the wood. Oh, so the wood is yeah. It's uh it has Upstairs its own place. Is own place yeah. Yeah. So this is the foam room. You know I've been shaping surfboards for nearly 54 years and um I have. Um, I have five planers. This is one of my original planers right here. This is a skill planer. This is the holy grail of. of Whoa, school. that's a looks like a. This is one. made. This is made back in the fifties. It was. They don't make a, them anymore. Like a that. door planer. No, they're highly. They're actually very collectible. That's the tool of the trade. This you is know, where the magic happens. I shape all different kinds of sizes. You know, long boards, short boards, guns. Stand up boards, you name it. First, well, you know the uh, thing—the thing that gives me a lot of joy and uh, uh, is that I've I've been able to help the, the younger generations like Andy and Bruce Iron, yeah, for sure, and Kamale and uh, you know. Uh, Kamale has been shaping a little. I know. He's, he's getting so there. All that whole generation, you know, besides Laird and Lyon, they all wrote some of my boards, and I got to you know, they got to step into the ocean and you know. Well, Laird's a good surfer because he had a dad like you. Well, you know, he'll tell you, he'll tell you otherwise. <laughs> we always want more, and but we've been given an abundance of it this this last awesome. six, eight weeks now. Eight weeks nonstop surf the contest at Pipeline. Yeah, I was Sunset. there a couple weekends ago. Oh, that's as good as it gets. It's been good for yeah. about a month straight there. Yeah, that's like unheard of. Yeah, because pipeline is like I know I lived right blow. there. Yeah, he, I he, saw I lived there for four years. I oh, saw. Wow. Yeah, you yeah. surfed that place too. Oh, plenty of times. And I, and you, with me and Jerry Lopez. I used to surf with Butch Van Horst then. Oh, really? And then Jock Sutherland. Jock would come by me, and we would be the only guys surfing the second reef at pipe. Really? All alone. The world. You watch some wave. of the movies that those guys like Butch and those guys like Butch is the only guy that could really ride it with a longboard. Yeah. He was really really a good surfer, but. You know, there's just a handful of guys, but most of the time, there's a picture in in uh, in the summer yeah. of Danny Duro and oh really? I didn't know that. Over the falls at Pipeline before, right after it was discovered. What? And I didn't it goes, know that. And and here goes Danny Durohan, and here comes the rest of the Pacific Ocean on top of him. <laughs> <laughs>
Who's this? Duke on a mo? This Duke, yeah. Beautiful. This is white. So I, got, I got to meet Duke when I was. Uh, That's what. That was my next question to yeah. you. I was going to ask you if you ever met. Well, Duke. I got. This is a. This is a pretty interesting story because I was in the. I was in the uh, Duke Conomoco. I was invited for, to the Duke meet for seven years in a row, but the Duke Conomoco Invitational was designed by Duke, and he wanted all the best surfers in the world to come together and surf in a tournament. And then whoever, you know, at the end of the tournament, he wanted all the people that were in the tournament to vote who they wanted in next year's contest. Mm -hmm. So it was basically we all were voting each other back into the contest. It was an awesome contest. And the trophy was out of the same mold as the Oscar, except they added the surfboard. So it's basically... Oh, no, it, yeah, it, I it, see it, that. It, gonna... the, the guy who made the Oscar trophies made the Duke trophies. The trophies cost $300 a piece. And they made like six or seven thousand dollars worth of trophies every year, and we all got one. So I got seven years of trophies, you know. But so I made it to the finals of the my first my first Duke meet in 1968. That was the year that Duke Duke passed away. But so his agent uh, Duke uh, Kimo Wilder McVeigh, mm -hmm. who managed him and managed Don Ho, he came down the beach and and Kimo dressed in in oh, city clothes, you know, oh. long white coats, long white pants, white belt, white shoes, white socks, and a little Arizona uh, tie, you know. Oh, like the kind of the, 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 the turquoise. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he came down and he goes, Billy, somebody wants to meet you. I go, who? He goes, follow me. So I'm going up the beach and the sand's pouring in his shoes and I'm thinking this city slicker. He must be pretty uncomfortable. It must be, <laughs> important. It must be important for him to come yeah. down here and get me. So. I come up and there I see the, the Duke limousine. It was a white stretch limo. And uh, he had a, a surfer on the hood, a hood ornament, right? I, went to, I knew that was a Duke. And I see this pant leg sitting out, outside the back doors open. I see this big pant leg. I said, the Duke wants to meet me? He goes, yeah, come, follow me. So I come up to him and he goes, Duke, this is Billy Hamilton. He, goes, he extends his hand. I put my hand in his hand, my, my hand, Turned into like a little baby sand inside his <laughs> giant swimmer. Was he a big guy? He was big, yeah, he was 6'4, six, 6'5. Six, um, but he had these massive hands, like like a catcher's mitt. And I remember it just swallowed my hand up, and I'm looking into his eyes, and he's got these dark, glowing spirit eyes, and he's looking at me, he goes, he goes, I appreciate very much how you surf. You surf like an ocean bird. You and Paul Straw are my favorites in this tournament. Good luck to you. No way. And I went, it's, a, it's really an that honor, awesome. really an honor to meet you. Dude. That is an honor. It's an honor to meet you. Thank you so much. And I remember I was speechless. I didn't know what to say. I just got crowned by the man himself. I remember I was 18 years old, floating away going, I don't ever have to win a contest ever in my life. I just got crowned by the man himself. That's awesome. That's, and it proved that's to be a the case because I yeah. only won one contest. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Hello, Billy. everybody. Enjoy. Oh, yeah. See, thanks for watching Tombo TV and go with it. Hello. Oh, look at those black fins. Wow, I like that. But anyway, this is what I film with Uncle Bill. Elaine. Only because the art on the top. Show the artwork on the top. Oh, wow. So. Like so what's the meaning of that? It's got a whole story. Heart, rain. Water of life. Water of love. Life. That's what waters mean. Um, the flower rooted in love. We get the, the collo. I like yeah, that. The nice roots of love. Tail. You did that? The she shaped the thing. She glassed it. She did everything. You, you did a great job. I only had to put... It's only know. because we're blessed. Yeah. <laughs> I like that too. We are all blessed just to be on this island with us. And this is Elaine. Elaine, Elaine Kenton. You see her out in the water, you better give her some waves. Right. Yeah. <laughs>